Hello and welcome to Haytor on Dartmoor in southwest England, a beautiful location for our review of ICOM's new scanner, the R15. You may have been lucky enough in the past to own one of these, this is the R5. There's been a few iterations since then and in those days when it came to programming your scanner, when you got a new one, getting the frequencies in and finding stuff that you wanted to put into the memories and then actually doing it, it could be a complicated procedure, particularly pre-computer days. Well, one of the things ICOM are so proud of with this one is they say the user interface makes it much easier for the beginner to get going straight away, get stuff programmed in and start listening. And I know a lot of stuff these days has moved on to either encrypted or digital, but there's still a whole array of signals to be monitored on AM and FM in the VHF and UHF bands and still a lot of enthusiasts listening to them who are going to love this new radio. So we'll find out how true that is. Uh, you might wonder why I'm standing by my car. Well, that's because I thought before I go strolling up on the hills, because we can take advantage of the high ground, that's why we're here, to see if we can pull in a few good signals on the old rubber duck antenna. Uh, I've got to program some stuff in, so I thought it'd be better to do that in the car, out of the breeze. So come with me, let's get in the car and do some programming. Oh, there we go, in the car, out of the breeze now, which makes it a bit easier for me to just run you through how easy it is to get this monitoring. Now, I call it a scanner. On the front here, it says communications receiver. And that's what it says on the box and on the manual, uh, but we all know it's a scanner. And boy, does it scan fast, as you'll see later on. So, nice and light, fits in the palm of the hand. Um, there is a belt clip that you can attach, so you can clip it on your belt. I'll show you that for wandering around when you're using it portable. It comes with the BP287 battery pack, uh, which is a 3.6 volt battery pack. When it's new, it should give you around 13 hours of operating time. And you can also get an optional BP293 dry cell pack that takes three AA size cells in case you run out of juice mid-trip. Uh, and you can also purchase an optional drop-in rapid charger. And as we'll find out later on, there's another way you can charge it as well, but we'll get to that in a bit. So this is the battery um, and really easy. It's just like with the recent ICOM handhelds, really easy to put it on. It's just a push and clip. So that's putting the battery on. Uh, let's have a look at the antenna. Uh, it's a multi-band rubber ducky antenna, this one, and it has a male SMA connector on the antenna, female on the radio. So if you're going to want to plug an external antenna into that, you're going to need to use an adapter. And I'd recommend a pigtail adapter so you don't put too much strain on the radio. Now, out of the box, it comes with the hand strap. I love putting these on, it threads through the hole. I'm not going to demonstrate that to you because we'll be here all week with my cack handedness. But one thing they have made much easier these days is the belt clip because this actually just clips on like that and it's easy to remove if you want to take it off afterwards. So belt clip on, we've done that. Uh, we're ready to start looking at the radio itself. So let's switch it on. And the first thing you notice, ICOM logo comes up first. Then we see the battery capacity, which is useful. And then you notice we've got this great full color LED screen, uh, which is part of what makes navigating around this particular radio uh, such a pleasure. Other features that you'll find on here, we've got a micro SD slot on the side here because you can save all the configurations of the radio onto the card, all your memories and everything else. Uh, you could then take it out of the radio and put it into a computer reader and save the files on your computer or connect it via the USB and you could do it that way. And uh, on this side, we have a headphone socket so we can plug headphones in here and of course it does have built-in Bluetooth, uh, so you can use a Bluetooth headset with it if that's what you prefer. You can have it clipped on your belt and just wander around listening to whatever you're listening to. There's a USB socket here. And so you can charge the radio via the USB and you can also connect it to a PC because you could download all your settings from the radio once you've got it set up onto your SD card and then you can read those settings on the computer and save them. Uh, for sharing with other people. You can even upload a picture from your computer that will be sort of your screen opening picture uh, when you switch the radio on. There is also some programming software available from ICOM, the CSR15 software, and again using the USB connection and your computer. Although I think one of the great things about this is the way they have set it up is to make it quite easy to get in there, get started, program frequencies in and start listening without even having to bother with the computer. 
So let's just check that out and see how easy it is to move around and get frequencies programmed in. Obviously, I've got a few uh, already programmed in, so we can show you how it works. Now, our navigation, we've got up and down and left and right, and our sort of OK button in the middle here. And we're on dual watch at the moment. So what we can do is I can step between those. So if I click the up arrow there, you'll see that we've uh, selected the top VFO as our main VFO. If I click the down button, we've selected the bottom VFO as our main VFO. If I click one of those and hold it, then whichever was the main VFO last becomes the only VFO that it shows on the screen. But when you've got both up there, you are in full dual watch mode, and that could be scanning on those two VFOs, uh, different frequencies in the same band or different bands or different modes, AM, FM, uh, whatever you want to do. It does also do wide FM uh, for the broadcast band. So you can uh, perhaps on one VFO be listening to your favorite broadcast channel uh, whilst waiting for some activity to pop up on your monitored frequency. If you want to change the frequency, you use the top knob. So we're in the top VFO and just doing this moves us in whichever steps we decide we want to move. Now, in order to set up the steps, there's a very useful button here, which will get you to a lot of settings that you're going to need to get to straight away. It's marked quick and it's also marked record. So if we press quick there, it comes into this list here of various useful functions. Now, the one marked TS here, if we press that, takes us in to our options as far as step settings are concerned. So uh, we're on two meters, so we want the 12 and a half K. Those are our channel spacings here. So we've done that. And now it's going to step up and down in those settings. And that will make it very easy when you want to program in memories because you could just start off here uh, in the two meter band. We could program that in as our first simplex channel. Step up one, save that one. Step up one, save that one, step up one, save that one, and so on. We're in VFO mode here. Now, if I want to change from VFO mode uh, to memory mode, we click the memory button there. And then to go back into VFO mode, we click that there. In, and that will affect whichever we've got as our main VFO. So the controls always affect the VFO that you've got as your main VFO. So we can whiz around within our two meter band here. Uh, but if we want to step a bit further away very quickly frequency wise, if we press this button here, the V megahertz button, our megahertz digit flashes, there we go. We can go whizzing off really fast. Uh, or another thing that we could do by using the left and right here, we can actually step through the bands that the radio covers. So these are the preset bands. And what it will do is it will show us in small digits just underneath the big digits at the top, uh, the, the band that we're looking at, the frequencies that it covers. So if we go like that, so we can step through the bands that way. And the one that we were on, of course, was that one. Well, the next thing we're going to want to do before we start using the radio is put a few more frequencies in. There's, there's stuff already in here that I've pre-programmed, but let's show you how you add something. So I haven't got the license free PMR channels in here. So that's the first thing we'll do then is create a category for them, because as we will see, uh, as I take you through this a bit further, um, the great thing is you can save your frequencies under particular headings, which makes them easy to find and also to set up particular scan groups. So we go to memory and we go to memory channel and uh, you can see here it shows some of the categories that are already created, but we're going to step down here to where it says add category. So we click on add category and in our menu here, what we've got is edit name, icon select, group select. So we're going to start with edit name. So I will click on that and by rotating this control knob that is normally the uh, frequency knob, we can change the letters. There we are. Then we're a long press on the memory key here. We're now going to go and step down one more in the memory to icon select. This is brilliant. Look at this. There's a range of icons we can choose here. So I can scroll through these and find the one that I most fancy uh, to go with PMR. I like this little antenna tower here. So I'm going to select that. There we go. That's me. Uh, icon selected. If we go back into memory and click on memory channel, we can see our various categories and look PMR has appeared. So now we need to put some memories into it. So we're going to go on this top VFO into VFO mode 
Uh, we need now to find uh, the band, the PMR band. So let's step through our available bands. Look, there's 440. The one starts at 440 is the right one. Now, um, we just want to set the step to be correct because that will make it really easy because what I thought was great about this when you program frequencies in was that if you had a bunch of channels to put in, uh, as long as you've got the step right, you can just get the first channel in, save it, then step to the next one, uh, save it, step to the next one and save it. So conveniently, we are on our first PMR license free frequency. So if we want to save that into the memory, we press this button, MR, give it a long press. And we've got a couple of options here, write to a new channel. We could choose another channel to write it to, but no, we want to put it on a new channel. So we click that. Um, now, it's displayed here a couple of the groups that are available. It's actually showing the two meter ham one, which has a, a, as a category and a, a subgroup, which is simplex. But we want to find our PMR one because that's what we want to allocate it to. So we press the quick button. We get this list here and we can go down to select category group. And there's our list and then we can go PMR, click that one. That's it. And then click that again, right to a blank memory channel. Yes. That's our first one done. And then it comes back to VFO mode automatically. Two steps takes us to our second uh, PMR channel. So we want to save that one. Right to new channel. Yes, please. Pull up the quick, go down to select category group. And we want PMR. Thank you very much. That one and that and yes. There we go. And that's our first channel saved. And we just repeat that step for all 16. To stop you all dying of boredom, I've uh, we stopped the camera and I programmed the rest of them in. So that's all done. Uh, we've got all the PMR frequencies in there. I'm still in VFO mode from where I was programming. So if I now go into memory mode, there they all are. And look, we've even got our little icon there of the transmission tower for our PMR. Now we need to get down to doing what this radio is really for, and that is doing some scanning. I think actually because we're in the car and also because we've got our um, filmmaking equipment around us, which generates a bit of QRM, I'm going to use the external antenna on the car rather than the rubber ducky duck, which I think will enable us to pick up a little bit more if it's there to be picked up. And um, it's also going to uh, reduce the amount of QRM that we get from inside the vehicle. So let's screw that in. So I've got an adapter, PL259 to SMA male adapter. And uh, I think the pigtail is a good idea because that's quite heavy and would put a lot of strain and pull uh, on that little antenna connector on the top. So I think it's a bit safer to do it like this. Right, let's do some scanning then. Uh, we've got our PMR channels in here. We're in that in memory mode. So I just hit scan. It doesn't start scanning straight away because it does just check what category or group we want to scan. And uh, we've got that up on the menu. Yes, it is PMR. We want you to scan that. And there it goes. And look at the speed that it scans at. I mean, we've all used our handband handies and our base stations and mobiles that will cover other frequencies other than the handbands and perhaps put them on scan. But they chug along at a fairly sedate pace compared with this. Look at the speed that is whizzing through those 16 channels. By the way, you can adjust the squelch. There's a little button on the side here. Uh, which is where your push to talk would be if this was a handy. So if I push that in, turn the volume down a bit, push that in, and then I can have auto, level one. I can have it open so there's no squelch, but that's not much point doing that if you're trying to scan. So let's just put it on level, let's have level one. Right, we're happily scanning away on the PMR frequencies on that top VFO. So now let me step down and make the bottom VFO the one that we're going to do stuff with. And it's actually in VFO mode rather than memory mode at the moment. And there is scanning stuff we can do there. So let's have a look at what we can do. Uh, so if we select scan then, we can just actually look for a band that we fancy scanning to see if there's anything interesting happening on it. So supposing uh, we were to just pick the amateur band, and if I press that, and there we go, off she goes. So it's scanning the amateur band from 144 right through to 146 and doing it that at a heck of a pace as well. There's another clever scan that you can do when you're in VFO mode, and that's the auto MW scan. What does that do? Well, what it will do is scan a set of frequencies that you ask it to, uh, or a particular band, and when it finds any activity on that frequency, it will write it to the auto MW memory. Now, every time you do one of these scans, you overwrite the last lot of frequencies 
in this memory scan. But you can, once you've got them in there, move them around. So you could find stuff and then you could move it later uh, into a category where you want to save it for scanning. So let's give that a try. Uh, so when we press OK on that, uh, it's now asking us what band. Well, a good obvious one when we're sat up here would be that one. Uh, it will change the mode itself to AM. So between 108 and 136 in the air band, um, we'll start scanning and see if there's any activity. Uh, it says clear all memories in the auto memory right scan group. So yes, and off we go. A couple of November India, uh, where would you like us to, uh, to put it down for fuel? There we are, a great little radio. I've enjoyed playing with it, and I've found that the user interface made it really easy to get started, to get frequencies programmed into it, or to scan and find activity. Uh, it covers from 108 to 500 megs, so that's uh, AM narrow and AM, then uh, FM, FM narrow, and also wide FM for broadcast reception. So it is actually a broadcast FM radio as well, so that's another good reason to take it with you when you go on your hollybobs. And there are a couple of other features that we haven't covered yet. One is the automatic noise limiter. This works on AM and really reduces that noise you get on AM channels. Um, the other one that I really like is the voice squelch. Now what voice squelch does is it means the scan will only stop, the squelch will only open if there's voice activity on that channel. And when you think about all the digital stuff and the QRM that you're likely to encounter as you scan through a bunch of frequencies, it's really useful if you can ensure the scanner's only going to stop if it hears voice, which is all that you really want to listen to on an analog scanner. Uh, the other thing is the record mode. Now this is great. Uh, the quick button at the bottom, if you press that and hold it, it goes into record mode and then whenever there's any activity on a channel, it will record it to the SD card. And you can set it up to do that when it's on scan. So you can leave it scanning away and it will record all the activity it hears. Or you might leave it uh, monitoring a particular frequency you're interested in and it will just sit there on that frequency until something happens and then it will record it and it will save it to the SD card. You can play it back through the radio or as we've said, you can download it onto your computer or take the SD card with you and plug it into another device and play it back from there. So in summary then, it's a great little radio, absolutely packed with features, so many in fact, that we've only skated over the top of them in this particular feature. Uh, but the stuff that we've covered is most of what you will find in the simple version of the manual. It comes in the box with the radio. If you want the more detailed manual that gives you all the info to allow you to deep dive into all of these features, you can download that from the ICOM website. This is the bit I've been waiting for, getting up on the high ground with the scanner, away from the man-made noise and seeing what we can hear just on the rubber duck antenna. I love walking and it's great to take this with me. Of course, I've walked miles today, well, all the way from the car park down there. But where I'm heading is up there onto that big rock. And I'm going to join some of those people who are clambering onto the top of it. One of the most popular, I suppose, most iconic uh, tours on the moor in terms of visitors coming to it. So I'm going to climb up there with them and have a listen on the new R15 scanner. I'll tell you what, it's a good job this is just a receiver. <laughs> 